Welcome to round number two of the Liget JSF4 series, the brand new series that's making its debut here at beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana Motorsports Park. I'm John Fippen, spokesman for the series. I'm joined by Nicola Verda, who has uh, had a great run in her first race in the FR series with a seventh place finish. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Nicole, I didn't turn your microphone on. Now we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's great. We're getting good pictures here of the uh, number 44 of Pablo Benitez Jr., one of the drivers for Scuderia Buell, as the safety car leads the field away. And let's introduce this 14-car starting grid to you. They are gridded based on their best lap time turned in race number one and we'll go from back to front starting alone assuming he'll make the run starting alone in row number seven is the 72 of jacob lauder from uh, edmund oklahoma for igy6 next to him the number 28 of drew such from st charles illinois for such racing in uh, car number one is jake pollock from san antonio texas for jensen in row five on the outside, car 49, Harbor Doss from Solon, Ohio for Berg DMG Racing. Harper was involved in an incident. I hope they were able to get the car repaired. Next to him in the, that fifth row is the number 95 of Brad Modgeman, the Australian from Caulfield, South Australia for Crosslink Kiwi. Outside of row four, car 44, Pablo Benitez from Port Orange, Florida for Scuderia Buell. Next to him, the number two of Parker Wallen. He was my co-commentator for the last race from Medina, Minnesota, Medina, excuse me, Minnesota for Jensen. In row three on the outside, car 83, Christopher Parrish had a good finish from Terrell, Texas for Save 22 sponsored IGY6 Motorsports. Next to him, the 24 of Daniel Quimby from Sydney, Australia, who finished the race without a front wing as Daniel races for the Atlantic racing team. Now for the front two rows on the outside, the podium finisher in the first race, number six, Maite Caceres from Miami, Florida, although she makes her home in Punta del Este, Uruguay for international motorsports. Next to her is the number 45 of Bacon Zelenka from Lyons, Illinois with the Crosslink Kiwi team. And now for your front row, the number 29 of Keikai Hawaneo from Plant City, Florida. Keikai driving for Crosslink Kiwi this year. And your pole sitter and the winner of the first round from the pole, the number 25 of Teddy Musella from Orlando, Florida for Scuderia Buell. So we had uh, kind of an eventful first race for the F4 drivers. They had a couple uh, incidents and uh, had a red flag in the middle. Pretty much the same thing we had in the Formula Regional race. So, uh, Nicole, are you uh, happy with your performance in that first race? Yeah, I think I did pretty good. Avoided a lot of uh, issues that happened on track. Yep. Um, honestly, just trying to keep moving forward. It's the first race of the weekend as well as the year. Exactly. So it's a long season to go. You bet. We've got a whole lot of races coming up, especially in the FR series as we're going to Indianapolis and we're going to uh, Mosport, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So uh, some new venues added, seven venues in all for the FR series. So it uh, should be great fun. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, exactly right. So, but we've got a weekend to get through. We've got two more races for your class tomorrow, but let's turn our attention to this brand new Liget JSF4 series. This is the first step on the PMH ladder. Uh, this series uses the first generation F4 car that we've run since 2016. And uh, we'll be introducing the brand new JSF 422 at our next round of racing at Road America. We introduced that car a year ago at Road America, and it's fitting that the very first race will be uh, up there in just about a month's time in mid-May. But let's turn our attention now to the starting grid for round number two of the Liget JSF 4 series as we await the countdown to begin. The field is set. You can hear the revs come up. We've got five lights lit, and we are away. And the full field gets away safely. That's great. They're making the run down toward turn number one, and it is our pole sitter at the front, Teddy Musella in that number 25, but it looks like the 29 getting a good run on him. Keikai Hawaniu sweeps around the outside. There's Maite Caceres in the six, in third. Bacon Zelenka right behind her in fourth as they make it through turn two and head down toward turn three for the first time. Good clean start. That's what we like to see. And Teddy Busella looking a little impatient. He's going to try to get back around Keikai. Keikai will now have the inside line as they head down toward turn number four, and he'll make that stick. But Teddy Musella right behind him. And then just behind Musella, Bacon Zelenka. As they work their way through turn five into turn six. It's been a tricky turn all weekend long. A number of drivers have 
overcooked it there at turn six. A couple guys getting stuck in the gravel trap. So Teddy Musella, kind of an unusual situation. He led the first race from lights to flag, basically. Had some pressure at the beginning, but he was able to stretch it away. But right now, Keikai Hawaniel able to take advantage of a great start, and he is out in front right at the moment. But behind them, Maite Casaras in the third spot. She's coming under serious pressure from Bacon Zelenka, who tries to go around the outside of Maite's car. But she falls back in single file as we've got a full course yellow already. That's clearly somebody is off up at the top end of the racetrack. It's out of our view from our commentary position, but the new Janetta safety car with James Rogerson at the wheel is at the ready and they'll pick up the field as they come around. So somebody off, I'm guessing, up around turn number six. We'll see if we can find out the story here as the field coming onto the front straightaway and they'll stack up behind the safety car. Keikai Hawadiel, your leader. Teddy Busella in second. Maite Casaras in third. Those two finished on the podium in race number one. Bacon Zelenka also on the podium in the first race. Parker Wallen having a good start. Parker shared the commentary booth with me for the FR race just concluded. Brad Majman, the one of the two Australians in the field in sixth spot. And uh, the 40. 44, Pablo Benitez, Jacob Lauter, Drew Such, and Christopher Parrish, your top 10. While we're under this full course yellow, let's take a quick break and thank the folks that make the broadcast possible here on Speed Tour TV. Okay, so pretend this is your race car. It's on the trailer and you have an accident. Ouch, at least your truck's insurance will pay for another one. Yeah, not so fast. Standard insurance won't replace your race car, whether it's in the trailer, in the paddock, in the garage, or the repair shop. But at Haggerty, we can protect it for what it's really worth any time it's off the track. No matter what or where you race, offer less than a set of race tires. Haggerty, let's drive together. The Sonoma Speed Tour returns to Sonoma Raceway April 19th through the 21st. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli Western Championship. The Sports Car Vintage Racing Association. Historic Trans Am. The Toyo Tire 2.5 Challenge. PSSA. International GT. And Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Sonoma Speed Tour April 19th through the 21st. For tickets, simply go to speedtour.net. And we're back with the first full course yellow of this uh, session of racing. Round number two for the brand new Ligier JS F4 series. As we've got uh, a couple cars off, it looks like Daniel Quimby and Jake Pollock are the two cars involved. Harbor Doss for Berg DMG was not able to take the start, I believe, but uh, Quimby and Pollock are off. We're trying to uh, uh, determine where the incident took place, but uh, nonetheless, the field stacked up behind the safety car with uh, no change in the order from what we gave you just before the break. Nicole, let's talk a little bit about your journey here. Uh, you were a go-karter, of course, as everybody was. Tell us about how you came to, to move up into the Formula Regional Americas Championship. Yeah, so usually most drivers actually start in Formula 4. Um, I got a few opportunities in Formula 4. I did a few tests with W Series when they were in, as well as some other. Yeah. But I talked with my parents and a lot of sponsors, and they just wanted me to do, you know, they thought it would be a good idea to do Formula 3 right away. So I did a whole season of testing because jumping out of go-karts to Formula 3. That's a big leap. You know, it's a, it's a big leap. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. It took a while to get into it. Um, but last year, I won the Formula Pro USA Winter Series Championship, Indeed. as well as the Main Series Championship, which was really cool and really good. Uh, and then came here at the end of the year to do, I did VIR in New Jersey, yep, which just to see where I'm at, kind of. Yeah, and sure. This year, I'm doing the full series. So that, that's awesome. I also did some racing um, for two, two seasons in India. There was a series um, that did it for five weeks at the end of the year in November to December. Wow. And so it was a whole championship with nice. guys like Porsche uh, drivers that were like in Le Mans and stuff. So there were actual good drivers there. So it was definitely a good seat time. You know, yeah. honestly, I'm just chasing seat time here and there, right? Sure, sure, yeah. What were you driving in the Indy at the, in um, the It was a Wolf GBO8. Okay, I so gotcha. So we had a whole Indian, cr uh, Italian crew working on the cars. Yeah. And then, yeah, it was actually a really good series. Awesome. 
Awesome. Yeah. That's great to hear. Maite Casaras had a, a podium in her first start here this this weekend. So that's a great start. We want we want to see more females on the podium. Definitely. So uh, let's get you up there to uh, for the two races tomorrow. But uh, Maite had a great run, uh, the Uruguayan. And we're getting a good shot of her as she uh, toodles around behind the safety car. As we get the uh, track workers doing their job to uh, collect the cars of Daniel Quimby and Jake Pollock. You can see they're working at the exit of turn two, and they've got one of the cars on the hook, uh, and it is coming in behind on a flat tow. So it looks like at least one of the cars not able to come in under its own power. Again, after uh, the first round of racing this morning, Teddy Musella, the points leader. In fact, he swept the first round of racing, turning, uh, he started from the pole and set the fast lap on the way to his first win. Maite Casaras finishing in second. Bacon Zelenka finished in third. And those three are running second, third, and fourth in the race right now. But Keikai Hawaneo uh, did not have a great run. He uh, was knocked out in an incident uh, early in the race and did not score points. So he's trying to make up for that right now. Keikai's had a pretty good run himself as he has uh, done some racing uh, in the uh, Yak Academy Winter Series. He only missed the podium once. Uh, and uh, he uh, had two podiums a year ago uh, in the uh, Formula Regional, or excuse me, the F4 US Championship. He had podiums at VIR and uh, nine top tens. So Keikai was a pretty consistent points finisher in yesterday, in last uh, last year's race. And like I say, finishing eighth, finishing in the top 10 in the championship. So taking the step over to the Lige JSF4 series, give him a chance to, like I say, seat time is all important and it's a chance to hone his race craft and see if he can do just a little bit better. And it looks like we're going to go to the restart as the course workers here do a great job. They've got the track cleared and we have 10 cars surviving on the lead lap. As the safety car pulls away from the field, turning it over to Keikai Hawaneo and he'll bring the field around for a single file rolling start. These Lige JSF4 this series, should we say, was the brainchild of uh, Tony Perella, the uh, Major Domo at uh, Perella Motorsports Holding has a chance to allow this first generation F4 car to continue to, to have some service life after the introduction of the new G Lige JSF 422, which we'll see in at Road America at our ne next racing round. The green flag is in the air. The field begins to accelerate and the battle is on for second as Mighty Casaras gets a great run and she's pulled up side by side with this morning's winner, Teddy Musella. And there goes Bacon Zelenka making it three wide, four wide as the two of Parker Wallen jumps out there as well. As they come into turn number one, Maite is going to sweep into second spot as she gets around Teddy Musella, shuffles him back to third. But Keikai Hawaneo continues to lead. But this great battle for second, Maite Casaras in that position. Maite racing for International Motorsport. And it looks like Teddy Musella is right in behind her. Teddy, the youngest driver in the field, 14 years of age, wouldn't be able to run in the uh, FIA F4 series because minimum age is 15 for that championship. So the youngest driver in the field has already got a win under his belt, but Keikai is looking like he's going to try to uh, get away. In fact, he's built up a pretty healthy lead. You can see from this beautiful uh, drone shot that he's opened up about a 10 car length lead. But Maite Casaras has got her hands full in second spot with this morning's winner, Teddy Musella, right behind her. Bacon Zelenka in that green liveried machine right behind him. Brad Majman, Pablo Benitez, and Brad and uh, Parker Wallen duking it out behind her. In fact, behind Bacon looks like it might be Pablo Benitez up into the fifth spot behind Bacon Zelenka. And it is indeed. We see a brake lock up there, a car coming into turn 13, one of the good passing opportunities on this racetrack down through 14 and then into the Mission Foods turn 16, the most important point on the racetrack because it leads onto the longest straightaway. That's a racing axiom. That's the most important corner in any, is there any place on this racetrack that really gave you trouble, Nicole, getting to grips with it? Uh, I gotta say the S's for sure. Yeah. As well as like the back part too. So like turn five, six and seven. So yep. just leading up to the S's, but I mean, there's always room to improve, right? So. Sure. Oh, 
someone just went off like crazy. Uh, yeah, Holy we got cow. A, big, a big cloud of dust, and that was right at, it looked like at turn two. We'll see if anybody's, yeah, the, the driver that was off has been able to continue. We'll get the ID on that in just a second. But Pablo Benitez up into fifth spot, as we mentioned, right behind Bacon Zelenka, right behind Pablo, Brad Majman, the one of two Australians in the field. Daniel Quimby, unfortunately, already out of the running in the number 24 car as he is not able to take the restart. Christopher Parrish being shown a lap down in the 83 car. There's a good shot of Christopher as he was late out of the pits, perhaps involved in that incident that brought out the full course yellow. But we've been clean and green here for the last couple of laps. You can see Keikai disappearing into the distance, but Maite Casaras also now putting a little bit of gap between herself as we've got a new third place runner as uh, Pablo Benitez, the son of the team principal in the Scuderia Buell team, Pablo Jr. Looks like he's uh, going to be very racy here as well. The two red cars from two different teams, Maite with International Motorsport, Pablo Benitez from Scuderia Buell, Bacon Zelenka with uh, Nicole's team, Crosslink Kiwi. Crosslink Kiwi, of course, uh, the dominant force in the team championship. 13 drivers here this weekend between the two championships. Uh, we should give uh, Tina and Gary a, a, a little bonus for uh, uh, propping up the entry list. It's great to have Crosslink Kiwi such a dominant force, and you you picked a uh, you picked a good horse to get it done. Yeah, of course. I love Tina and Gary. They're amazing. Yeah, they're great people. Brad Majman in the 95 car, one of your teammates, in his first start in this championship here this weekend. He finished in the points in fifth in race number one this morning. Getting a good look at the youngster. Brad out of Caulfield South in his native Australia. He was the uh, KA2 2023 Australian Championship third place finisher. And he won the Super Nats in Micro Swift back in 2019. He must have been about 12 back <laughs> then, if not, if not younger than that, perhaps. So now we're having a look at this battle between Pablo Benitez and B Bacon Zelenka. That's the battle for fourth spot. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's Teddy, M Teddy Masella, this morning's winner, just in front. Pablo is just behind Bacon as we got the order wrong. Oh, looks like Bacon got a little squirrely as he made it into turn 13, but is able to gather it back up. Now they're making their way around the final sequence of turns. Plenty of time left. We've still got 16 minutes left in this race. The uh, constant has been Keikai Hawaneo as he has continued to click off fast laps. A 143.5 is within a couple seconds of lap record pace. Bryson Morris holds the race lap record set here back in uh, 2022, a 141.2. And Keikai has a 143.5, and now Maite Casaras, the second place runner, the Uruguayan, has just clicked off the fastest lap of the race. So she goes purple with a 143.366. Here's the 25 of Teddy Busella, third place. Bacon Zelenka making a move, tries to go around the outside as they're working their way through turn three. Now they head up towards turn number four. And Bacon just wasn't able to stick it there. That that sequence between three and four is a great one. If you can get outside at turn three, that puts you on the inside for turn four. It's a great passing opportunity. Yeah, it definitely is. That's what happened to me in um, my race. Uh, passed on the inside of turn four. There you go. Making it through turn six. That's been the bugbear for a lot of drivers here in lots of different classes racing here in the Speed Tour this weekend. And uh, Scott Goodyear, our race director, has made it real clear to uh, the drivers in both of these classes to, uh, you know, keep it out of the gravel trap at turn six. It's a turn that, can, uh, you know, I, I think it was uh, Terry Irwood who did the track talk. He calls it a sucker turn. It's one of those turns where you can uh, get a little overconfident and uh, carry a little too much speed in there. And then you track out wide. And once you drop a wheel in that gravel trap, you're going for a ride. We understand the 44 car showing a little damage. In fact, you can see the side pod and the radiator completely loose on that 44 car of Pablo Benitez. So Benitez not having the luck that he would have hoped for. 
because that's going to act as a sail to slow that car down. Plus the fact he'll have to guard against overheating because with that radiator out there, it's not going to be delivering the cooling power to that mountain tuned Honda power plant. So Bacon Zelenka still hanging on to that spot. In fact, he has gotten around Teddy Musella. So Bacon Zelenka now moving up into the third spot. Musella drops back to fourth. As we see the 44 car of Pablo Benitez with that damage to the side pod. Might have been some contact, side to side contact with another car and kick that side pod loose and damage the mountings for the radiator. So how uh, Neo with about a 1.2 second lead the last time by. As we stay with the 44 Pablo Benitez from Scuderia Buell. You can see that radiator sticking out there. Well, that's going to be troublesome for sure. Because if that breaks loose, it's going to dump some coolant on the racetrack and he will go for a ride he did not intend if he gets uh, coolant under the, the uh, rear tires of that car. Looking at the 29 of Keikai Hawaneo. Getting some redemption after being knocked out in this morning's race. And he is out in front and drawing away. Keikai's had a good run after starting this race in second position, took over the lead on the first lap and has not looked back as he comes on to the front straightaway to complete race lap number eight this time by. Again, we go by time rather than distance. So with the, uh, the clock counting down to about 12 and a half minutes left, everybody minding their P's and Q's. That's what we like to see. Good, clean racing, close racing. We're certainly all in favor of that. But one of the things you have to learn coming out of go-karting is what Scott Goodyear calls situational awareness, being aware of where you are in the racetrack, because it's not as easy to feel where you're uh, where your competitors are in a go-kart they're right there you can you know bump elbows almost in these cars you got a little more uh, real estate you have to contend with yeah definitely as well as you're so strapped in that you, like in go-karting you used to look behind you with your head sure. you turn your head to see who's behind you but here you're looking in the mirrors you're also relying a lot on your engineers that are telling you like who is where and like how much time and like spotting for you yeah yes. and all that yeah it's a good look at, K at uh, Maite Casaras, our second place runner, as she has opened up a little gap over Bacon Zelenka. So it looks like, as you can see, the top three just about equally spaced from this beautiful drone shot. Alaneo holding the fast lap of the race. He's into the 42s now as the fuel burns off the car. And they get a little bit quicker, a 42.8 for Kekai. Maite's quickest lap is a 43 flat. Bacon Zelenka's fastest lap was his last, and that was a 43.2. There's the 25 of Teddy Musella currently running in fourth spot just behind this green liveried machine of Bacon Zelenka. Musella, who led from the pole in the race earlier today, looked like he might be able to make it two in a row as he started from the pole in this one as well, but just has not had anything for the two cars in front of him. So obviously tire strategy is a factor too. and, and uh, and Nicole, especially with the FR cars, you can easily burn the rear tires off because you got a lot of horsepower under your right foot. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like you can just feel it wearing off at, by the end of the race. We were pretty, we didn't really see it too much because we had so many red flags Yeah. as well as the yellow safety cars and stuff. So we didn't see as much, but definitely you can, you can feel it coming. I don't want to, I don't want to give away any strategy, but are you uh, going to take on a new set for race two tomorrow morning? We'll see. We'll see. Huh? We'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a, it's a closely guarded secret for, uh, for a lot <laughs> I, of I'm not even sure. <laughs> yeah, I haven't exactly. talked about tomorrow. Yeah, We're yeah, in that, the present yeah. right now. Well, once you look at the data, you might, but they, they might make a different judgment. Yeah, for yeah, sure. for sure. It will be cold tomorrow morning. So. Yeah, yeah. Definitely cooler than it is this morning. There's the 95 of Brad Majman, one of your teammates on the cross from the Crosslink Kiwi stable. Brad currently holding on to fifth spot. He finished in fifth in this morning's race as well. Brad really in his first experience in a full-size race car. With his uh, all of his karting experience in his native Australia, as well as making his way to the U.S. for the Super Nats on multiple occasions. But he is a little deeper in the field than he would like to be for sure. But it's a learning experience. After this first day of racing, there'll be 
some opportunity to debrief. That's another thing that you don't do in go-karting that you do in these kind of cars. You've got data traces to look at. And so you and your team can uh, do some research. And with a, a team as big and as, uh, as well-funded as Crosslink Kiwi, you've got a lot of different drivers to compare your, uh, your data traces with. And you learn some things, I assume. Oh, yeah, for sure. I used to be on a team that was pretty small compared to, like, Kiwi. And Crosslink, like, it's helped so much having, like, the fastest guys on your team, right? So you can see their data, their video. It is so open, and it's definitely, like, cool to talk as well to all the drivers. Sure, yeah, an opportunity for you to learn some things. As you've got some, some folks on your team that have won championships or finished in yeah. the top three of championships, Ryan Sheehan immediately comes to mind. So uh, the 83 of Christopher Parrish currently running in the eighth spot for the IGY6 team. His teammate, Hayden Bowlesby, was my co-commentator for the first race of the weekend. Christopher had a pretty good run in uh, the first race, finished in fourth spot. He's a little deeper in the pack this time, running eighth as they're trying to find the, uh, the, the secret to getting that car a little bit quicker as he is well off the back of Jacob Lauder uh, running in seventh. Lauder about eight seconds behind Drew Such, who's about 12 seconds behind Brad Modgeman, who's about eight seconds behind Teddy Masella. So the top four really are the cream of the crop in this race at least with uh, Alan Eo, the leader, Maite Casaras in second, who just set fast lap of the race, Bacon Zelenka and Teddy Musella. They've, they've uh, really put some distance on the rest of the field. Brad Majman in the 95, not able to match their pace. As you can see, the field pretty well strung out here. And that's kind of unusual. Normally in, in these F4 races, we see them much, much closer. But again, the, the warm conditions here and the tire wear on this uh, second session on this set of tires for most of the drivers, definitely a factor in keeping the race close. There's the 72 of Jacob Lauter. We talked about Jacob briefly. He's from Edmond, Oklahoma, 20 years old, and he's the teammate of Christopher Parrish on the IGY6 team, the local team based in Folsom, Louisiana. Back to the 72 of Jacob Lauter, running by himself pretty much in seventh spot. As the leaders flashing by our vantage point here, completing race lap number 11. There goes Lauter across the stripe to complete, complete that 11th lap, but he's 39 seconds behind the race leader. So Jacob's gonna do a little soul searching, I'm sure, and see if he can find a little more pace for the finale tomorrow. As there are three races each weekend for both the classes for the Formula Regional Americas. We only did one FR race today. We'll do the final two tomorrow. These drivers have had this now their second of the three races of the weekend, so they've only got one more to go. So I, I would guess, based on how the field is stretching out, it's differences in tire strategy and tire preservation that's, uh, that's making this field a little less compact than it was in the first race this morning. Yeah, definitely. What goals do you have, uh, Nicole? I mean, uh, everybody wants to be in Formula One or in IndyCar or whatever. Uh, do you have a, a little broader spectrum? Maybe you're looking at sports cars. Where would you like to go if, if your dream could come true? Well, I'm so open to like any opportunities that come around, right? If it's GT cars, of course. Um, currently, right now, I'm just staying in open wheels because of my age. Sure. Just trying to, you know, use it. Um, I can always go to sports cars in the future. Sure. Um, Definitely Formula One would yeah, be yeah. amazing. Wouldn't that be sweet? Uh, just trying to figure out some stuff, you know, definitely sponsors are one big thing. Yep, yep. Um, just, yeah, just honestly just working towards those goals. Yeah, exactly. And you've already raced in internationally in India, obviously, so you're you're uh, setting the uh, setting the, the groundwork to make that, uh, that dream possibly come true. So uh, keep our fingers crossed and we yeah. can make that happen. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of which, there's Maite Casaras, the Uruguayan. And she is not letting Keikai Alanio get away. She's only a second and two tenths behind him. And we're down to about five minutes to go. And on the last lap, she was about two tenths quicker than Keikai. So let's keep an eye on Maite to see if she's got a charge here. But she's on her way to perhaps her second second place finish in a row here. But if Keikai has even a little bit of a stumble, she's going to be right there. They've opened up a gap of almost three seconds back to Bacon Zelenka. Bacon's not even in the same camera shot. There's Bacon's car in the uh, number 45. That bright green livery is 
easily easy to pick out in this field. He's the only one with that delivery. I don't know how well you've gotten to know Bacon, but he is, uh, he's quite the character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. He's got a really dry yeah. sense of humor, and yeah. uh, he's, he's, a, he's a fun guy. I really yeah. enjoy spending some time with him. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. 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 It's cool to have such good teammates, right? And he's probably the only person you know that has a pet pig. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the only person. Definitely for me, he's the only one I know. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's look at this battle for second here, or for the, for the lead here. Maite has set the fast lap of the race. And I think she's got uh, she's got a chance here. Uh, Maite, of course, did you know the great thing with the F1 Academy last year. So racing on an inter international scale in an F4 car, uh, you know the W Series went belly up, and so the Formula One Academy a great opportunity for female drivers to get themselves into the international eye. And Maite had that experience a year ago, and that racecraft is is. Uh, definitely put her in good stead. She is in the in the hunt for the lead here. As Kekai may have uh, been a little over exuberant at the beginning of the race, built up a big lead, and now those tires are starting to feel a little hurt. And Maite maybe did a little better job of managing them. Yeah, she's gonna make this a battle right down to the wire with three minutes remaining. Coming into the S's now. A little slower for the first two, and then it gets faster and faster as you go a little deeper into the race especially in the FR car, I'm sure. That's a, a real balancing act because you're not be, you're not able to go flat through there for sure. Oh, no. Maite, use it up all the racetrack right out to the edge of the curb, straightening it out as much as possible as they come into the final turn on the racetrack. Just a couple laps to go. I would guess we'll see the white flag, not this time, but next time by, as it looks like we've got about two and a half minutes left. She has got a shot at the victory here. Kekai is going to be checking his mirrors as they come down toward turn one. Watch that helmet. There he goes. He's looking. Don't block. You can't move in response as Maite is going to try to go around the outside. That'll set her up for a run to turn two. She gets a little squirrely. She's pulled the trigger here. Maite into the lead. Well done, young lady. Heading down toward turn three. Kekai is not going to give it up easily. He's going to try to stay on the outside here at turn three, which will give him his shot for the inside line at turn four. Maite having to be just a tad defensive. That gives Kekai a good run. Here they go into four. But Maite doing a great job, well judged for the Uruguayan young lady. And she makes her way into turn five. Three in turn number six. As we're gonna get a retake, uh, a replay of this pass as Kekai kind of threw a block, but he was sportsmanship, uh, good, shows good sportsmanship, and Maite just said, thank you very much. I'll take that line that you've offered me. And now that she's gotten by him, I think Kekai is going to have his hands full because he sort of faded into that situation. The tires, I'm guessing, going away on that car. Maite had a little more under her as they come into this final lap. Looking at the starter stand, we expect we'll see the white flag this time by. We haven't heard seen that signal just yet, but they are making their way onto the final uh, turn, and there is the white flag. One lap to go, and off the course went Maite Casaras, I believe. Did she spin off at turn 15? She just went straight. Yeah, there Did she is. Something? Oh, my goodness. Counting her chickens Whoa. before they hatched, perhaps. Whoa. As Maite, oh, what a disappointment. I think she's still going to stay in second spot. No, or no, Musella got by her. Oh, what a heartbreak for Maite. Looked to be on her way, perhaps, to a victory. She just had to keep it together for one more lap. But unfortunately, down there at turn 15 and 16, a little too much pace, and the car got away from her. But she's been able to get back on track. She'll still salvage a podium finish out of this. But, oh, just got to show you, you've got to complete all the laps. Yeah, you, you can make finish a the race. You can make a mistake on the last lap and it and cost you the race. So Kekai has some breathing room now. Let's go a little deeper in the field. The battle now between Brad Moshman and Bacon Zelenka. Another situation, Bacon was right up there in the thick of it, and he's dropped back a spot with Brad Moshman taking over that fourth place just a lap ago. Now Bacon's going to try to get it back as they go to the inside there at turn four. So Bacon now on the run down to turn five. Brad Moshman going to try to square him up. And just behind them is Drew Such. 
But Bacon Zelenka looking to get himself back into a podium position, perhaps. I think a podium's pretty much out of the question, but a fourth place finish very much in his offering. There's Jacob Lauter just behind him, Christopher Parrish behind Bacon, Drew Such and Jacob Lauter with Christopher Parrish at the tail end of that. But the checkered flag is in the air for Keikai Hawaneo. Started outside of row one, took the lead early, and has not been challenged until the next to the last lap when he had to give up that lead to Maite Casaras, and then she made a mistake on the final turn, and Keikai Hawaneo takes his first win of the season. Across the line in second, Teddy Musella for his second podium of the day. And here comes Maite Casaras, salvaged a third place finish. She'll learn from that. That's a mistake she won't make again. That's how you learn. You, you know, uh, any race car is driving it on the limit, and the only way to find that limit is to exceed it. And uh, she found the limit a little bit too late, unfortunately, but a great job nonetheless. Congratulations to her for notching a podium. Bacon Zelenka holds off the challenge for Brad Mochman and finishes in fourth spot. Mochman comes across the line in fifth. Drew Such has not yet crossed the stripe, so we'll withhold judgment to make sure that he's able to hold on for that sixth place finish. But there's a good look at Maite Casaras. I'll be interested to talk to her on the podium and see what she has to say about that little miscue. There's Drew Such across the line. He does indeed finish in the sixth spot. Jacob Lauter finishes in seventh, waiting on Christopher Parrish to make his way to the line. We'll get all the points payers across the stripe before we head down to the podium. As we follow Maite Casaras around on her cool down lap. I'm gonna make my way down to the podium. Nicole, thank you so much for being with us in the commentary booth. You do a great job. If you decide to give up racing, you'll do a great job in the commentary. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> right. yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being with us. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, DJ or, or Ben or both uh, as I make my way down to the podium to uh, interview our winner. So race number two of the weekend for the first weekend of the Lige JSF4 series is in the books. I'll talk to you at the podium. Well, we join back in the action as John makes his way down to podium ceremonies. DJ Clark and Ben Sissel back up here in the booth. And Ben, we were just talking. I mean, that was an absolutely fantastic end of the race. Yeah, here come the results with our new Lige JSF4. Take it away. Kike Haruno, uh, Harunio able to take that win there over Teddy Masella. Then Mate Karaksis in P3. Bacon Zelenka in P4. Brad Mamjan in P5. As we continue to look down through that order, that IGY6 Motorsport team, Jacob Lauder and Christopher Parrish in 7th and 8th. Pablo Benedis in 9th. Parker Wallen in P10, multiple laps down there at that point. Drew Such, by the way, in six plates for Such Racing. A great day uh, for Crosslink Kiwi Motorsports, taking three of the top five positions. IGY Motors, IGY6 Motorsports in there as well. It's plenty of good racing action. We obviously saw that a uh, little bit of a mistake there from Mate that uh, sent her off. As you heard John preview and say, going to be interested to talk to her on the podium. I wonder if that was just a little bit of a lapse in error, a little bit of a lapse in judgment, or if something happened there at that point. But uh, clearly, some great talent coming through up that's, here. That's what the series is about. The yep. Liget JSF4 is a driver development ladder series. So I'm sure uh, she is going to remember that for the rest of her life. And yeah. We'll talk about that. And when she does driver instruction and when she's racing, she's going to remember that and learn from that. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, exactly. This is a series that is meant to promote those kind of mistakes so that you can learn from them, so that you're able to build your way up and be a better driver. And indeed, the chassis here, less downforce, less aerodynamics to make it harder to drive and to, frankly, punish little mistakes like that so that you have to learn from them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my whole life is... Uh Anything I ever learned was from basically a life lesson or a mistake. You know, yeah. you don't learn from the good things. So that was awesome. And what a great race. Great day. Great start to this new Lige JSF4. Thank you to NOLA Motorsports Park and the NOLA Speed Tour. We had a lot of great fans out here. 
great weather, as you can see from these drone shots, looking over basically the bayou and, uh, you know, in the Mississippi River in New Orleans. But what a fun day. But we are back tomorrow. We are indeed back tomorrow as we are getting ready to throw down to John on the podium. Thanks, Ben. We've got the winner here, Keikai Hawaneo. Keikai, it looked like the tires were going away a little bit at the end, and Maite got you, but then she made a mistake in the final turn. Yeah, she got up to me, but uh, we're going to make some setup changes because a little off, but uh, we'll come back tomorrow and hopefully get the win. Say, uh, certainly a better result than you had in the first race this morning. you got to be pleased with it. Yeah, first race was <laughs> not to our liking, but uh, we got it done here in the second one. Congratulations, your first win in the season. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Kai Hawaneo, your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Let's head up back up to the boots to wrap it up. All right. Well, there is your interview with the winner here at this point. And that will indeed conclude all of our coverage here today. But make sure to join us tomorrow. We'll be back with more racing action from SVRA, from FR, and from Trans Am. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty.